welcome back all of you today we can do certain programs by using list so the, see the first question write a program to count how many times a specified element present in the list program to count how many times a specified element present in the list so you have to first you have to create the list after that you have to accept the specified element and check it how many times that particular element is present in the list. Okay. That is the logic. Just write down the logic in your notebook. First, you have to write the, uh, first you have to create the list. And after that, accept the specified element, accept any element. And after that, check whether this element is how many times present in the list. So, this is the logic. So, I am going to start the program here. Now, the first step, you have to create a list. So, to create a list, first I am declaring an empty list here. L equal to empty. Empty square bracket means it is an empty list. You can write the comment statement over here. So, count the, I am going to write the comment statement as, as count how many times, count how many times specified element present in the list. Specified element present in the list. So, this is the question present in the list. Now, next, this is, you just created an empty list. As L equal to square bracket, empty square bracket means you are just creating an empty list. Okay. Now, we, we, we won't accept the total number of elements. I am not going to accept the total number of elements. In the previous class, I just discussed a new method to accept the value into the list. So, by if you, you, uh, you can ask to the user, do you want to continue? So, if user is saying yes, then repeatedly we will accept the value. If user is saying no, there you can stop the execution. So, that is the way I am going to accept the value for the list here. So, for that purpose, I am going to use a variable opt whose initial value is y. And I am checking the y, uh, using the while loop to check this condition opt equal to, equal to, equal to y. It is already y, so automatically it is entering into the loop. OPT equal to equal to capital Y. Always use this method to accept the values for a list. So, I am not accepting the total number of elements. Okay. So, uh, OPT equal to equal to Y or OPT equal to equal to capital Y. Both the condition you are checking. And the first element I am going to accept over here. A equal to int input and the first element. So, and the element. And the element, you are accepting the first element and stored in the variable A. A is a variable where you are accepting the first element. And L dot append of A. L dot append of A means you are adding that element to the end of the list. Already we studied the use of append function. Append function is add an element to the end of the list. So, whatever you are accepted to the variable A, which will be added to the list L. L dot append of A means that A is added at the end of the list L. Now, L is empty, first element accepted and which will be added to the list. And you can ask to the user, do you want to continue? Input, do you want to continue? Do you want to continue? See, you can give a message like this. So, if you are giving the um, value, if you are giving the input as S, again the loop will be repeated. If you are giving the input as no, then it will be stopped there. So, your input will be either yes or no. You can give the value here inside the bracket, yes or no. Okay. So, the value can be, input can be either yes or no. This is the way you can give it there. Okay. So, when you run this program, you can give, do you want to continue? You can give yes, y, yes, uh, y for s and n for no. So, this using this loop, you accept the values and stored in the list. And the next step, you have to accept the specified element. I am going to accept the specified element inside the variable as int input and the, and the element to be, and the element to be counted. Yes, and the element to be counted. So, the element, the specified element you are accepting here. So, that is there in the variable s. And the next step, you have to check that how many times s is present in the list. 
how many times s is present in the list so for that counting i am using the variable count count is a variable using that count variable you are going to check how many times the variable uh, value s is present in the list okay so i am going to use the for loop for k in l so using this for loop you will get one element from the list the same for loop we will study we studied in the string also and the same thing you can use it in the list also so each time when the for loop is executing you will get one element from the list and that is stored in the variable k each execution each time you will get one element from the list so k in l the first element will be there in the variable k and the next step i am going to check if k equal to equal to s s is the specified element the first element you took it from the variable list s uh, list l and that is there in the variable k and you are checking whether k equal to equal to s k is the element present in the list and s is the element to be uh, element which is to be counted if it is equal to equal to s then you are updating the count count equal to count plus 1 count equal to count plus 1 then that for loop again repeated you will get the second element you are checking the condition count is updated you will get the third element checking the condition count is updated only if both are equal then the count is updated otherwise you will not update the count so here the variable count is there and after that i am going to display the value print number of times you can give the proper message over there number number of times element present is i can give the message count number of times element present is count run the program you will get the answer go through the program once again see this using this for loop you are creating the list and this is the element to be searched and using this for loop you are searching the list run this program you will get the answer element the first element is 56 do you want to continue yes second element 34 yes next element 78 yes again next element is 34 yes element is again 34 it is s element is 78 or 79 and no so that now that uh, list is created now it will be counted now i just want to count how many times the 34 is present you got the answer number of times the element present is 3 34 is present in the list is 3 Three times thirty-four is present. That is all about that question. Just go through the program once again. First, you try to get the point. What you are, what you done it here. First step, creating the list. Second step, second step, you just accepting the specified element. Third step, you are checking whether the specified element how many times present in the list. That is all about the logic. Now the next question given in the video is this one. write a uh, write a statement to count how many times the given element present in the list both question are doing the same thing first one is do you have to write a program that is just write a program and the second one write a statement just with a, with a single statement you have to count how many times a specified element present in the list see the difference the first one is a program second one is a statement i will write the statement we studied about the count function okay so i am just just declaring a list like this is not compulsory write a statement means you just want to write a single statement so to get a clarity i am writing this uh, list over there i am declaring a list in this way this is a list which consists of uh, this much of elements are there yes so here this is a list and i can write p equal to l dot count count is a function of the list l dot count of 8 l dot count of 8 so what the function is doing what the method is doing the count method will check how many times 8 is present in the list l so only this answer is enough only this much is enough or you can write both the sentence also and you can write the explanation just below then in the above above sentence or in the above statement 
the function count will check how many times 8 is present in the list L. How many times 8 is present in the list L. Okay. So, or you can write P equal to L dot count of L dot count of element. This is enough. This is a single statement. This is a simple statement. Here, element is the element to be searched and nil is the list. That is the way also you can write that answer. Now, see the next question. So, the same question, it's two different ways. One is program and one is statement. There is only difference. Next question. See the next question. Write a program to find the largest element from a list. Write a program to find the largest element from a list. You have to create the list. After that, you have to find out the largest element from the list. Procedure is same. What you done in the previous program, the same procedure you have to follow here also. First, you have to create the list. After that, find out the largest element from the list. I will try out that program here. Yes. Content is this one. I can give the comment statement as largest Largest element. Largest element. See, this is an empty list. First step, you have to create a list. You have to create a list. So, I am using the same logic everywhere. OPT is initial values y. Y loop. OPT equal to equal to y. Or OPT opt equal to equal to capital y both the conditions we are checking both letters capital letter and small letters are checking and first we are going to accept the first element input element we are accepting the element yes next term your list is l l dot append of k which is added Again, you are asking to the user, input, continue, yes or no, yes. Do you want to continue? You can give the full message. I am not doing that. Yes. So, you can give the full message over there. Using that loop, the full uh, entire content of the list will be accepted from the user. Okay. Next, you have to find out the largest element. To find out the largest element, we studied the same logic in the for loop problem, um, for loop case also. So, same logic, I am going to use it here. First, I am going to assume, I am going to take L variable large, large equal to, large is a variable, large is equal to the first element of the list, L of 0. L of 0, the first element of the list is at position 0. So, L of 0 is, uh, is given to the variable large. Okay. So, large is equal to L of 0. So, the 0 element, we are assuming that 0 element in the list as the largest element. This is only the assumption. We are assuming that the largest element in the list uh, is 0 element. So, that is stored in the variable large. And next, I am going to take the element one by one from the list. You can use any method. Here, I am going to use the for loop for K in L. First element will be there in the variable k. And you are comparing if large greater than or if large less than k. Now your assumption large is the large the highest one. k is the first element from the list. And you are comparing large less than k. If large less than k means you have to change your assumption. So I am changing my assumption as large equal to k. Your assumption you change that means your assumption then. 0th element is the largest one. Now you got the next element and you are comparing large with the next element. If large is smaller than the next element, then you are assuming that the large is this second element, next element. That procedure will be repeated there in the loop. And when you come out of the loop, you can say print, print largest element is, largest element is large. Largest element is large. Just run the program and we will get the answer there.
first element 45 do you want to continue yes second element is 67 yes next element is 12 yes next is 20 again yes now one more element i'm going to give that is 2 now no so the largest element is 67 from this one so there is a logic now check the program once again this part will find in create the list this is only the assumption statement after that you are taking each element from the list comparing your assumption variable with that element if your assumption is less than the element then you will change your assumption that procedure will be repeated here in the loop and when you come out of this loop you will get the largest element copy down the program into your notebook First, you try out the same program in Python. After that, copy down the program into your notebook. Now, see the next question. Next question is write a statement to find the largest element from the list. Both the question output is same. Both the question is doing the same content. But here it is you have to write a program. Write a program to find the largest element. Here write a statement. You just want to write a single statement to find the largest element. So, we already studied the function to find the largest element from a list. Max is the function to find the largest element from a list. Max is a function. Max and min function. So, max is a function find to, to find the largest element from the list. So, I can write the list like this. L is equal to, it is few elements I am going to copy into this list. Yes. Now, I can write P equal to l dot sorry p equal to max of max is a function so there we will not use dot operator it's a function so function name inside the bracket list name so it is l max of l you will get the maximum element there in the variable p so you can write the explanation as max is a function which will find out the largest element from the list l and stored in the variable p okay so that is all about the second question write a statement and the next question is this one yes write a python program to add 10 to all the even numbers in the list write a python program to add 10 to all the even numbers in the list in the previous question see in the previous question you just want to find out the largest element from the list so we are not changing any of the list element we just finding out the largest element we are not changing the list element in the previous this program also we just want to count how many times a specified element present in the list there also there is no change in the list element you are just counting how many times a specified element present in the list List element is not changing. Here in this question, program to add 10 to all the even numbers in the list. Here you have to change the content of the list. If the element in the list is an even number, then you have to add 10 to that number. And the changed value added list, added list element will be written into the list. So we are trying to change the content of the list okay so the logic is different i am going to use the different logic here anyway first step you have to create a list normal procedure you have to use to create a list and after that you have to use another method to add a new element uh, sorry add 10 to the each element of the list i'll show you that one go through that program now the first step this is not the comment statement. Comment statement is add 10 to even numbers. Add 10 to even numbers. Okay, there is a comment statement. The first step, we have to create a list. Yes, you just created an empty list. And you are declaring a variable opt equal to y. And you are using the while loop. While opt equal to equal to y. Or opt equal to equal to capital y you are checking the condition opt is y or not if it is y you are accepting the first element i am going to accept the see 
yes same is yeah yes there is single quote yes w equal to the first element i'm going to accept here input input enter the element next your list name is l dot append of w yes next we are asking the user whether you want to repeat or not repeat yes or no yes so here this is single con so using this law you just created the list you are accepting the elements into the list you're creating the list over there and the next step we have to add 10 to each element of the list there i am going to change the uh, logic over here till in the previous program we use the for loop in this way for t in l this is the way i am use the for loop that means at a time you are taking one element from the list and you are checking the your condition you are checking on that element here so that means we cannot make use if you are using this type of for loop we cannot make any changes in the list element so instead of using this for loop i am going to use the first form of for loop range for loop here so if i am using the range for loop then i can change the content of the list i content of the list by using its position by using its index so the first term i am going to find out the length of the list the first step i am going to find out the length of the list so i am going to use the function r r equal to len len is a function to find the length of the list len of l now you got the length of the list length of the list means total number of element in the list total number of elements in the list now the for loop i am going to use it like this for j in range for j in range r so r elements are there in the list r is the length of the list so j in range r so you are taking one element at a time using its index position in the previous case one element at a time you are extracting you will get the element here using this for loop you will get the index position of that element that means if you have five elements in your list assume you have five elements in the list if you have the five elements in the list here len is 5 and the for loop is for j in range of 5 you will get this as for, for j in range of 5 j in range of 5, 5 means first time j will get the value 0 second time j will get the value 1 next j will get the value 2 again j will 3 j will be, become 4 so you 0 1 2 3 they that 0 1 2 3 are the index position of the list element index position of the list element okay so i'm not changing now here so j become now r is l uh, sorry r is 5 so for j in range 5 for j in range 5 means you will get the first value of j as 0 yes i am going to here i am going to this is okay I can write if L of J. Can you say L of J means L of 0. J becomes 0 now. So L of 0. If L of 0 percentage 2 equal to equal to 0. So that means L of 0. The 0th element in the list is. We are checking whether the 0th element in the list is an even number or not. L of 0 percentage 2. So, the element the list is an even number or not. If it is even number, then we have to add 10 to that number. So, I can add 10 to this number L of J equal to L of J plus 10. L of J plus 10. So, 0 element is equal to 0 element plus 10. You are adding 10 to that 0 element. And the added value will be placed in the same location, in the 0th location itself. Check it whether you understood or not. If I am using the, the other form of for loop, then I cannot change the value in the list. So now you are changing its, taking its index position. Using its index position, I can change its content. So now J, initially J becomes 0, L of 0 percentage 2. You are checking the 0th element 
is an even number. If it is even, you are adding 10 to that one and the result is stored in the 0th location itself. Again, the same for loop will be repeated. J will be, uh, J, J will be updated to 1. The same procedure will be repeated there. That is all about that one. Now, when you come out of the loop, all the even numbers will be changed. Next, I can write print L. I'm going to display the value of L. Right? Now, here I'm just displaying the original list. I'm just displaying the original list. Print L. I can give the message as original list. Original list. See, this is the original list. And the modified list will be here. This is the modified list. If you want, you can give the message over there. I'll run the program and see the answer. Element. Element is 12. Yes. Next is 77. Yes. Next is 45. Again, yes. Next is 20. No, no. Original list is 12, 77, 45, 20. Even numbers added with 10. So, this is 20 to 12 is even number. 10 is added. 77, 45 as it is. Next is 20 is even. 10 is added. It changed to 30. That is all about that program. The only change I made it over here, this part. This is because I just want to change the content of the list. Previous question, there is no need of changing the content of the list. Now, see the certain questions, I just given it as a homework. All these homework questions is the same pattern of this one. There are six, four, five questions are there. All these questions we have to do in the same pattern. Here, program to count the number of even elements, even uh, elements present in the list. Here, only the counting is there. There, you don't want to use this, this form of for loop. Range for loop is not, you can use it, but the other form, other form of for, for loop also, can, you can use it. But the, the other one is simple one, than this one. So here there is no change in the list element. So you can use the other form of for, for k in range L. So for k in L, that format you can use it. Here, program to find the square of odd elements. Square of odd element. That means you are trying to change the content of the list. There you have to use this form of for loop, in range form, in range for loop use it. And here display the elements in a list in reverse order. Reverse order you have to display the list element. Think about the logic. This is write a statement to reverse the content of the list. You studied a method, using that method you can reverse the content of the list. And the last one write a program to find the sum of all values which are ending with 5 from a list. There also a list element is not changing. List element is not changing. You just want to find out each element whether it is ending with 5. If it is ending with 5, then you have to find out with sum. There list is not changing. You are checking and after you are finding out the sum. There list element is not changing. So you can use for k in L. That format you can use it over there. So do this as the homework. Okay. Thank you children. The remaining topic you can study in the next.